Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Blue and Gold Illustrated's Anniversaries video. I'm staff writer Andrew Owens here with senior editor Lou Samoji. Today we're going to go back 30 years. Notre Dame of course coming off a trip to Tallahassee last week. 30 years ago they went down to LSU when no one really expected them to win and, and what did they do Lou? That's usually how it occurs Andrew. Uh, Notre Dame 30 years ago at 84. Jerry Faust was in his fourth season as the head coach and there were grand predictions. They were in the preseason top ten, uh, but they lost three straight home games consecutively to Miami, Air Force, and South Carolina. Each time they were booed off the field in the rain. And now you're three and four, and you're heading to Death Valley in LSU with <laughs> thousands of people screaming, Tiger Bay, Tiger Bay, Tiger Bay. It was the ultimate ready for a bloodbath situation for Notre Dame. I, I think most people were expecting something like what happened in Miami in 85 where you lose 58-7 to seven. and right away LSU goes up 7 nothing, and then it just kind of hits kind of a lull there and Notre Dame has nothing to lose and it plays the game of its life. It, it ends up outscoring them 30-7 to seven the rest of the way and LSU scored a late Hail Mary touchdown in the closing seconds to make it look respectable but all of a sudden, here is Notre Dame beating that year's SEC champ in Death Valley, and Jerry Faust makes the cover of Sports Illustrated there as the embattled coach who, hey, I'm going to make it. So that, that's always kind of the, been the history with Notre Dame, is when you least expect it, you get the unexpected, but usually that often is a bad sign because it doesn't meet that consistency level. If you play up or down to the level of competition, and Brian Kelly talks about it, as you can explain. Yeah, Kelly's talked a lot this year about how he tries to get the program to, to play down to its preparation, so to speak, rather than up and down with the talent of its opponent week in and week out, and maybe that's something LSU didn't do that week. Yeah, I mean, it's very easy in those situations, and that was kind of the specialty during the Jerry Faust era, is they pulled off a lot of great victories in 1982. You know, they upset Michigan here under the lights, they beat Miami with Howard Schnellenberger, they beat Pittsburgh, which was ranked number one with Dan Marino at quarterback, but, you know, they would lose to Air Force and a down Purdue team, and that, that was that up and down uh, area that those great victories made the upsets more frustrating. You know, in 83, they upset Doug Flutie's uh, outstanding Boston College team in the Liberty Bowl after finishing 6-5. and five. Then, you know, again, they, they lose three in a row at home in 84, and then they upset LSU, nearly lose to Navy the next week, and then kill Penn State 44-7 and win in the Coliseum against the uh, USC, 19-7 to for the first time in 18 years, and USC went to the Rose Bowl. So it was that up-and-down nature that really, I think, frustrated so many people. Not necessarily a sign of a stable program when you're going up and down like that. That does it for us here at Blue and Gold Illustrated. We'll be back in two weeks for the next edition of Anniversaries.